Hi everyone, welcome back to Howtex. Today we have the Azul Link multifunction remote. In our first video, we did an unboxing and introduction to the Link, and in this video, we're going to do a step by step walkthrough of the entire setup process, including both programming the IR functions and connecting to a computer. In this case, we're going to show on a Mac. So let's get the batteries in there. Just pop the back off. And one down, one up. Okay, and we can see a blue blinking light already. So one of the really cool features on this guy is it has this backlight button. So if you turn this on, I think you can see uh, basically this side will light up. And if you push it again, this side will light up. So there's actually two modes. Right now, uh, this thing lights up blue, which means that it's in the 2.4 gigahertz wireless mode. And if you push this one, uh, the light switches to white, which means it's in the infrared mode. So if I have this thing programmed to work with my TV, for example, I can just press this and then now start doing uh, whatever buttons I programmed here. So let's do a quick demonstration of programming the IR Blaster for your particular TV. So in this case, you want to take this AI Learn button, which is actually just puts it into learn mode and hold it down for three seconds. And when you see this guy blinking, now you want to take the button that you want to map, map to. Three, two, one. You want to take the button that you want to map to. So let's try the AI power. And so now we want to map that to the power button here on our remote control. So just point the two to each other. And you'll see when I do it, this thing starts blinking slowly. Now, before it stops, press that same learn button again. And now it stopped blinking. And so it should. Now, yeah, you can see, can control the TV just from this button. So in the interest of full disclosure, I think this really depends on the type of TV you have. So for this junky old Hisense, I was actually able to get it to work for the power button, but for changing the uh, source or volume up and down, actually it didn't want to work for some reason. So I don't know if that's just that I programmed it wrong, or uh, is it because this particular remote control is incompatible with what this guy can replicate. Um, but it works for the power, so I can't imagine it's that difficult. Maybe I just have to keep trying your results may vary. So controlling a TV is just the tip of the iceberg of the uh, functionality of this. Uh, using the 2.4 gigahertz uh, dongle connected through a USB port, uh, it claims to be able to do Windows and Mac OS as well as Android, and apparently it works with some uh, game system as well. Pretty much anything with a USB that can accept input from uh, a keyboard or mouse, uh, this thing can work with it. So uh, let's turn this guy off and power up a computer with it. In this case, we have a MacBook Air running Mac OS. Um, and so let's connect it for both the keyboard and the mouse. So first you want to take the dongle that comes with it and you have to plug it into any USB port. So first of all, on Mac OS, it brings up this setup box. And before we can use that, we actually have to be sure to pair this guy with the uh, USB dongle, which I have plugged into the computer now. So in order to do that, you want to just press the plus and minus buttons for about three seconds. And then when you see this guy solid, that means it's paired. So once it's paired, then you want to make sure that it's in the uh, blue mode, which is the 2.4 gigahertz, not the infrared mode. So just keep pressing this until you see blue, which I do right now. And now let's try one of the buttons. So you can see that I actually control the, I can control the volume now. So now that we know the volume works, let's try the mouse part out. So let's go mouse on and off. And now you can see, basically I can control the mouse pointer here by tilting. Okay. So, so it's pretty interesting. Uh, let's try clicking, dragging, click, right click, And let's try the keyboard now. 
So as I mentioned before, the keyboard is a bit spongy and it takes a lot of push, uh, so it takes a little bit getting used to. One interesting thing to note is that when you have it in the keyboard orientation, the mouse stops moving. So you can see here, as long as I have it keyboard up, uh, it's not a mouse, but if I switch it back, now suddenly it becomes a mouse again. Okay, so we hope you guys enjoyed that detailed walkthrough of the setup and demonstration of the functionality of the Azul Link. Overall, we think it's a pretty cool device. It's not perfect, the keyboard is not the best for typing a lot, but don't use it for that and you should be fine. Um, the air mouse is pretty good, it maybe takes a little bit of adjustment of the sensitivity. Uh, and also we had some difficulty programming the IR functions uh, to replace a regular remote control, but we were able to get, to get it to work. Uh, so I think it just takes a lot of practice. Overall, not a bad device, especially considering the price. It's worth checking out. And we want to thank Azul for providing the hardware for these videos. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. If you have any feedback about this device, any problems you had, we can try to help. And of course, please give us a thumbs up and check out our other videos for the Azul Link and many other popular home electronics. See you next time. Bye. One other tip, I found that if you press this, the button, it'll actually pause it. Um, so if you know, you're in the middle of a conversation, your phone is somewhere else, you just want to...